I have been asked a few times recently about how to install an electric vehicle charging point with its own consumer unit. Some car owners are realising that the 13 amp chargers plugged into their kitchen sockets are just not up to the job and a dedicated charging circuit and correctly rated charger are essential. The consumer unit, or garage unit as I call it, must include RCD protection and SPD protection. This easy video will look at what's involved as regards which wires go where, but assumes you already have some installation experience. So let's get started. We should begin by briefly reviewing what SPDs are and what they do. SPDs have one job to do, to reduce any spikes or surges on the incoming cables to a level that reduces the risk of damage to other electrical equipment and appliances. Table 443.2 on page 108 of the wiring regulations book shows the maximum voltage impulses that various types of equipment can handle before risking damage. This video concentrates on domestic installations and looking at the table we can see in the red boxes that domestic appliances, home DIY tools and so on have an impulse withstand voltage of 2500 volts. But surges from local lightning activity can easily exceed 2500 volts. Another area of concern is the switching on and off of heavy machinery and plant that might be local to the premises and producing switching spikes on the supply. Manufacturers of the appliances and equipment listed in the table will make their products capable of withstanding impulse voltages well in excess of the required limits. But we should not take this for granted. I must point out that an SPD will not protect a property against the effects of a rare direct lightning strike. They will only protect against the effects of surges that have been induced onto the electrical system in the local area. A direct strike is end of story. In an ideal world, our electrical supply is a nice smooth 50 hertz or 50 cycles per second. The supply will peak at a nominal voltage of 230 volts AC RMS and perhaps when measured with a test meter it might be around 240 volts. During a lightning storm there may be ground strikes a few miles away that induce excessive voltages into the supply cables. This may result in a surge on the cables entering the house and these short duration surges or spikes in voltage can easily be several thousand volts in amplitude. The problem that we have is that most home appliances are now controlled by microchips and electronics and we own so many smart devices now, computers, TVs, phones and game machines, not to mention the increasing ownership of electric vehicles. A surge of several thousand volts can easily damage these devices, resulting in thousands of pounds in replacement costs. A surge protective device is designed to be the frontline device to absorb and dissipate the energy in the voltage surge and reduce it to a safe level of just a few hundred volts and thereby protect our sensitive appliances and equipment. As regards over voltages, take a look at page 107 of the Brown Amendment 2 Regs book. Regulation 443.4.1 tells us the protection against transient over voltages or surges shall be provided at the installation where there may be serious injury to or loss of human life or where there may be significant financial loss or data loss. Note that indent number 2 has been deleted from the regulations. What does this mean? Protection against transient over voltages shall be provided where the consequence of overvoltage results in serious injury to or loss of life, for example hospitals, care homes, home life support or medical systems, results in the interruption of public services or damage to cultural heritage, 
for example data centres, museums, castles, etc., interrupts commercial or industrial activity, such as banks, supermarkets, hotels, factories and farms, or affects large numbers of individuals at the same time, for example, in offices, universities, schools or tower blocks, but nothing about domestic installations. Staying on page 107, the next paragraph talks about all other cases, which will include domestics. This paragraph informs us that the owner of a domestic installation, the householder, has a choice about SPDs. It says that SPDs shall be installed unless the customer, the householder, declares that they do not want SPDs installed and they themselves will accept the risk of any damage and any losses, ideally put in writing. But considering the cost of replacing damaged devices and appliances, does the customer really want to risk damage to their electrical equipment for the small cost of an SPD? They must balance potentially several thousands of pounds in replacement costs against £50 pounds or so for an SPD. Time now to build our EV consumer unit. This is just one method, but they all follow a similar thread. I've chosen a small garage unit for my electric vehicle consumer unit, which will be spurred off the main tails going to the house consumer unit. Inside the EV consumer unit, we have, from right to left, a Type 2 SPD, an RCCB main breaker rated at 40 amps working current and 30 milliamps RCD protection. This is followed by two Type B MCBs rated at 32 amps each, one for the SPD, one for the EV charger circuit. Some devices will require the above sequences to move from left to right. Every manufacturer is different. What I've done here for clarity on the drawing as I add cabling is to separate each of the devices just to help visually as you follow what we are doing. Let's begin with installing the incoming supply, which I would leave unconnected at the house consumer unit, only making the connections when everything else is installed and dead tested. I've chosen 25 square millimetre line and neutral tails into the RCCB and a 16 square millimetre earth into the earth bar. The bus bar is installed along with its plastic cover and the neutral conductor from the RCCB to the neutral bar, which must be 6 square millimetre in size. Now install the earth cable from the PE terminal of the SPD into the earth bar. This conductor should be 6 square millimetres in cross-sectional area too. Next, I will install the line and neutral conductors to the SPD as shown. For a 32 amp MCB, I would install 6 square millimetre conductors, although 4 square millimetre is acceptable. For 20 amp breakers, 2.5 square millimetre is OK. The maximum length for line and neutral conductors to the SPD is 500 millimetres each, non-negotiable, although here they are likely to be less than 150 millimetres. Now install the cabling for the EV circuit. Line from the second MCB, then neutral in the neutral block, and earth or CPC into the earth bar. For a 32 amp breaker, line and neutral should be 4 square millimetre minimum with a 1.5 square millimetre CPC. If the cabling will be external to the building, a suitable cabling type should be chosen. Consider mechanical damage, UV from sunlight, extremes of temperature in summer and winter. And that is it as far as the EV consumer unit installation is concerned. It's important that we understand where the SPD is actually positioned within the circuit and we have left the earth cables off this drawing just for clarity and understanding. In real life, the earths will be there. The SPD is in parallel with the EV circuit. The current for the EV charging circuit does not flow through the SPD, 
Rather, it flows past the SPD. The SPD is monitoring the voltage coming out of the RCCB. We provide an MCB to protect the SPD in case of electrical breakdown of the device. Even if we had several circuits in our consumer unit, they are all still in parallel with the SPD. None of the current for these circuits flows through the SPD. The SPD will only become active when a surge is detected. A few things to pay attention to and to not forget. As regards earth rods, if the EV charging unit has a built-in earthing system that meets the earthing requirements of the IET wiring regulations, then the need for an external earth rod is not necessary. If the EV charger does not have built-in earthing, then an external earth rod may be necessary to ensure safe operation. As an installer, it is your responsibility to ensure that you comply with the earthing requirements and with the manufacturer's instructions for the charging unit. For IP ratings, we should consider IP44 rated equipment as the recommended minimum. This will provide protection against splashes of water and light dust. See the manufacturer's specifications and follow their recommendations for the charging unit. Where greater protection might be required, consider IP55 rated equipment or an IP55 enclosure for the equipment. Also consider the effect of impact on the equipment, accessories and cabling and install, if possible, in areas that reduce the likelihood of damage from impact or moving vehicles. And do not forget the effects of sunlight, heat and cold on cables and other accessories. Select and install accordingly. Installing an electric vehicle charging unit and associated circuit is Part P notifiable, as we are making a significant addition to the existing household circuits. An electrical installation certificate should be issued to the client along with the Part P certificate. An SPD is provided with health indicators. Green for normal operation. The circuits are SPD protected. And red, the unit requires changing. SPD protection may be non-existent or limited. This is because the SPD will lose some of its efficiency with each surge that it has to deal with. How many surges is a grey area as the size of the surge and the frequency of the surges will affect its life expectancy. Generally, in areas of low lightning risk, an SPD should provide protection for at least three to five years. If the indicators are red, replace just the SPD module, not the whole unit. Leave the base attached to the consumer unit and just change the pluggable SPD module. The customer should be advised by the installer to check the status of the health indicators at regular intervals, perhaps at the same time that they check the operation of the installed RCDs. Electricians should check for the same as part of their visual checks and at the time of periodic inspections. A quick summary on what we've discussed. An SPD is installed in parallel with a circuit that it protects. A 32 amp circuit breaker should be installed in series with the SPD. Conductor lengths to the SPD should not exceed 500 millimeters. The size or CSA of the SPD conductors should be observed as indicated in the video. For domestic installations, the customer can decline to have an SPD installed. The customer's decision to not have an SPD should be obtained in writing to cover yourself in any future disputes. Installing an electric vehicle consumer unit and charging point is Part P notifiable. External equipment should be suitably IP rated and due consideration should be given to impact from moving vehicles and the effects of the weather on equipment and cables. Some charging equipment does not need an earth rod. Other equipment not complying with the current IET wiring regulations may need an earth rod. Always comply with the manufacturer's instructions. 
Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And I hope that you found this video both useful and informative. It all adds a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are always adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.